Hello students, welcome back. Yesterday having discussed uh, the second law of thermodynamics, having discussed the equivalence between Kelvin Planck and Clausius statements, now we are all set uh, to move towards an exciting topic. Now what we are going to do is we are going to study, in fact we are going to imagine and then study an ideal heat engine. Okay, an ideal heat engine. Uh, now, uh, before we do that, it's important that uh, we understand certain concepts because we are uh, we are going to construct an ideal engine intellectually, right? And for that, we require some conceptual understanding. So, one concept is that of a reversible process. Okay, a reversible process. Um, you know, the word reversible. What does it tell you? Something which that can be reversed, you can say it's reversible. Okay, but it's not as simple as we think. Now here, let us let me ask you a question. Suppose here we have a this is a piston cylinder arrangement that I'm showing here. So this is I'm showing a by dotted line. I'm showing system boundary. Right? This is a system boundary. And there is some fluid here. Okay, let's say that there is. Uh, I, I have placed some stopper here, and the fluid inside. Let's let's say it's gas. Okay, uh, has some higher pressure than the surrounding pressure. Right now, the piston is not able to move towards right, meaning the gas is uh, gas cannot expand because there is this stopper. There exists pressure in equilibrium, inside pressure is high, inside the cylinder pressure is high, outside the pressure is low. Let's say uh, inside it is 10 bar and let's say here it is 1 bar, around that atmospheric pressure. Now at this moment let's say uh, we say that there is uh, there is some pressure, the, the, the thermal, this system has, has uh, is under equilibrium, right? And you know what is an equilibrium state. Uh, please go back and uh, study that. Okay, uh, if you don't know that, but I, I it just let's accept that this is an equilibrium state. That means it's possible. I'll make a chart here. Let's say a PV plane. I'm showing a PV plane here, right? And in this PV plane, I can mark a point one. This is a state one. This state one at which pressure is ten bar, and there is certain temperature let's say 90 degrees celsius something like that okay i'm just showing this is a state okay now uh, suppose i remove this stopper what will happen the gas would expand it will keep on expanding let's say if the cylinder is coming on here and now the gas has expanded okay so it will have occupied new volume uh, by the way here i should also mark volume v1 let's put a some volume so now the volume will be a new volume, then the pressure will drop, maybe temperature will also change, right? So the, the system has moved to a new equilibrium state, right? Somewhere here, let's say, because pressure has dropped, volume has increased. This is PV plane, so this is volume, okay? Now, uh, suppose we say that, so in, during the process, there is certain work transfer, the work is done on the system. So it has moved during this process, let's say, the work transferred is W12, right? The work transfer is W12. You can say, let's say 10 kilojoules, some arbitrary value. 10 kilojoules of work is transferred to the surrounding. Now, is this process a reversible one? Meaning what? That means, can we reverse the entire process such that you take exactly same kilojoules of work, that is here we are saying 10 kilojoules, right? 10 kilojoules of work 10 kilojoules of work is transferred to the surrounding so I am let's say that we can take 10 kilojoules that means now we are acting from the other side the piston is pushed and you come back to initial state which is pressure P1, temperature T1 etc. So the system has attained the initial state and from the surrounding Whatever work was given to the surrounding, right? Whatever work was given to the surrounding, that is taken back. If you can do that, that means you can say 
that the earlier pressure, earlier process of expansion, earlier process of expansion was a reversible process because you could reverse it in such a way that the system came back to its initial state and from the surrounding whatever work was done on the surrounding that is taken back okay if this happens then this expansion process you can say it is reversible so a reversible process is one which when reversed will leave no trace no trace trace in the sense mark okay no trace either in the system or in the surrounding okay now if that happens if that condition can be satisfied then you can say that the process is reversible okay that means if this process is reversible that means what will happen suppose I, we draw a path of the process this is 1 to 2 right and this what is this area under the curve that is work transfer right area under the PV uh, uh, the, the process line under that process line on the PV plane is work transfer so this is your work transfer okay this is your W12 now this process is reversible if you can go back to the initial state following the same path following the same path if you follow a different path obviously the area under that uh, curve will be different so the work transfer will not be same but we want to take exactly same amount of work from the surrounding that means you move from 2 to 1 that means now there is no change in the surrounding because whatever work was done that is taken back and there is no change in the system because the system has come back to initial state this if this happens this process is reversible okay this process so i just state the concept of reversible process uh, a process is a thermodynamic process is reversible if it can uh, if it can be reversed in such a way that there is no trace left in the system or in the surrounding that means system comes back to its initial state and surrounding is also where it was so you gave them work you took out some work so okay so system and surrounding now if i ask you so is this possible right is this possible for an expansion of a gas to be reversible right and most likely your answer would be yes you might say yeah why not like you know it's like you allow the gas to expand then you compress the gas finish so it's a so it's the expansion was reversible that's what you would say right and i, I think that's what you would say uh, but think hard and uh, answer this question and by by our intuition right we would say obviously it's why not like you know you straight the rubber you leave the rubber rubber regains its original shape it's exactly like this you ex allow it to expand then you reverse it come back to initial what's wrong in that it's possible right now you might be surprised if i tell you that in nature in nature no process is reversible no process is reversible right now that's that's something which might surprise you but it's the truth no process in nature is reversible i'm going to talk about nature universe and second law later and that will be an interesting lecture a short video clip but that will be interesting but right now I'm, I'm talking about thermodynamic process thermodynamic process uh, it's part of nature will say that this is not possible so uh, a reversible process hmm, uh, is really not possible okay it's not possible but a reversible process if at all we want to define it has to be defined in this way a reversible process is one uh, which when reverse will leave no trace in the system and surrounding now the next question you will ask is um, if reversible process is does not exist in nature why we are imagining that and that's a very interesting question right there is a reason why uh, we imagine a reversible process okay and uh, this is something which i would uh, i'm going to elaborate why we want to uh, imagine that but i'm going to answer that question much later okay much later but uh, right now hmm, please note what what we are doing is as i said right at the beginning of this video lecture that we are going to intellectually construct an ideal heat engine okay what's an you know what is a heat engine heat engine uh, is uh, where heat uh, uh, engine which is working in cycle which converts heat supplied to it into work but it also we should also know, note that 
this heat engine uh, is it works within the bounds or limits of first law and second law. That means you have to supply certain heat because you cannot create work out of nothing. You have to supply heat and at the same time you have to reject the heat because second law says that uh, entire heat supplied for a uh, to a heat engine which is working in cycle cannot be converted fully into work. Some heat has to be rejected, right? So. But now within this bounds of first law and second law, uh, we know what is a heat engine and now we are interested in constructing intellectually, uh, there is a reason why I say word intellectually, uh, we will, I will come to that as, as we go ahead. But and to, in order to construct that heat engine, an ideal heat engine, sorry, I, I wanted to say ideal heat engine, um, intellectually, we wanted to understand this concept of reversible process. And I explained to you what is the reversible process and at the same time I told you that this is not possible and then the question is if this is not possible why we are discussing this okay uh, now uh, this is what will be uh, discussed as we go ahead okay uh, so in the next lecture I am going to explain to you uh, why what are the reasons which make uh, the reversible process impossible thank you